is a page tour for my Viper Gecko vivarium. Um, I only have one adult male Viper Gecko in here currently. Uh, the cage is a Zoo Med Creature Den, um, which is essentially pretty similar in footprint uh, to 10 gallon. Um, they just replace some of the height with a little bit more length, uh, which is perfect for a ground dwelling gecko like a viper. Um, so to start off with here, we have several different hide options in here. So we have this cork bark right here that he can get under. Um, we have a stick to climb on. Um, these rocks right here are for basking. Um, he can also burrow underneath them if he wants, um, but don't worry, the rocks are actually up against the ground, or not the ground, but the floor of the cage so he can't burrow underneath them and have them fall on top of him, uh, which you always want to do if you do put rocks in your uh, cage. Um, so this is powered by a halogen basking bulb, um, which is attached to a thermostat. You can see the probe here. Just gonna pull it down a little. Um, so that keeps the basking area between like, I would say around 90 to 92 tops. Um, coming over here. So we have this dinosaur hide, which he really likes. He's in that right now, actually. So let's see if we can find him. At least he was when I checked a minute ago. Nope, he's not in there anymore. So he's found somewhere else to go. Oh, there he is. He's under his driftwood hide. So he's a really cool little viper. Um, he's darker than most other ones that I've actually seen. He's a little bit darker. The substrate is some like fine sand. Um, I don't remember the brand off the top of my head. I think it's some Exoterra Desert Sand, that's what it is. Um, and then we also have Bearded Dragon Desert Substrate, uh, which is a product that I've never seen on the market before until recently, so I thought I'd give it a try. And that's what these little like pebbles are, um, which kind of go really well in here to just, you know, give the substrate some additional texture, make it a little more compact. Um, here we have a mealworm dish for him. So there's a rim here so then his mealworms can't crawl out. Um, he's not the biggest fan of mealworms. He prefers crickets. Um, he's kind of a slow hunter. So the problem I've had in the past is that the mealworms don't continually move enough to keep his interest um, or they you know, would escape the old bowls and then bury into the substrate before he could get to them. So um, I tried out this shallow mealworm bowl and he did eat quite a few of them last night. So I think that'll work really well for him. Here's a little water cap. Um, I wanted it to be something shallow and something that he couldn't accidentally fall into. Um, he can easily get over the side to drink it. I haven't seen him drink out of it. Um, but I do mist the sides of the tank um, probably like every other night. Um, and I do see him drink like, he likes to get up here and drink off the top of his skull. Or even sometimes off these rocks here. So, and this is where he basks. He generally basks on top of that cork bark right there. Um, yeah. But that is my Viper Gecko Vivarium. Um, they're a pretty easy species to care for. They just need that warm spot, which you can do with a halogen bulb like I did, um, a CHE, uh, so a ceramic heat emitter, or you can also use a 
uh, under tank heater as well, just as long as you maintain that 90 degree temperature range for them to be able to digest their food through that belly heat. I do turn on, let's make sure he's not under there. I do turn on um, a CHE at night for him. And then, like I said, I use that halogen bulb during the day. These guys are really similar to leopard geckos. They come from the same area of like Pakistan and the Middle East. Um, they're not as friendly as leopard geckos. They're smaller, a little bit more skittish, um, but they are a really fun gecko regardless. 